Right, so let's take a look at, uh, we've had uh, some old dear friends of mine. <laughs> All right, people, I'd like you to click like, click share. We're going to share some words on uh, the, the Sunni defense. So people, the Sunni defense are back. Um, <laughs> I say Sunni defense, but really they've, I don't know what they've got to do with Sunni. I mean, maybe like Wahhabi defense. <laughs> right, so, and not even maybe all Wahhabis, but, you know, but these guys are back. And one of them, this guy, uh, he's made a video exposed, right? And is Abu Layth a Dajjal or a Jahil? Ah, ah, ah. Oh, like, <laughs> look at the, the false compassion that they're giving you a choice. That it's like, you know, we're giving you a choice, man. Like, are you a Dajjal or are you a Jahil? You know, just... <laughs> you got to love the compassion. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> so these guys are back. So this guy... <laughs> I think his name is Farid, Fariduddin. <laughs> Baba Fariduddin Ganja Shakkar. <laughs> toba Toba. Baba Fariduddin Ganja Shakkar is an amazing and awesome, uh, uh, as, like a saint figure from, from India, ancient India, Pakistan, like that. Obviously, nothing to do with uh, <laughs> this Fariduddin. There's, uh, what's that? <laughs> what's that saying? Kaha Raja Boj, Kaha Gangu Teli. In fact, that's a better name. Baba Fariduddin Gangu Teli. <laughs> so Gangu Teli here has done a, a refutation of me, right? And he's upset. And he's, he, he's really upset that, oh, Abu Layth. Because a hadith on equality in marriage doesn't sit well with him. Because there's this lack of equality. Uh, why, why don't we begin by you actually saying what the hadith is? Uh, my friend, my friend, please, you know, please, this one, please, say this one, you know, this one. The hadith, ladies and gentlemen, that he's referring to, that he's talking about, Oh, because it doesn't have equality. <laughs> it's nothing to do with equality. The hadith is to do with raping your wife. <laughs> That's what the hadith is. It's not a laughing matter. The hadith is trying to justify, right? Typical, typical Wahhabis. إِذَا بَاتَتِ الْمَرْعَ هَاجِرَةَ فِرَاشِهَا زَوْجِهَا That if a woman refuses to have sex, with her husband, the angels curse her. The God, God is ang God Almighty is angry. That why hasn't he had sex? Like God is angry. <laughs> the, the, the heavens are, are are aflame. That how is it that he has not had sex? For I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance. Right. So. This hadith, which in one of my previous sessions, and you can watch the whole segment, it's on YouTube, about religious blackmail is haram. Like I've said that marital rape is categorically haram, and that includes religious blackmail. So to say to somebody uh, that you have to have sex with me, otherwise God is going to be angry with you, is haram. You can't do this kind of stuff. You can't use God... To, to, to gain favors or sexual favors from people. That's sick, right? So now, and the angels will curse and so on. And so I've been through this hadith in the past. I won't go through the whole thing. I went through the riwayat in Muslim, Abu Dawood, Bukhari, Darmi, Ahmed, and showed how they all centrally pretty much are based on al Amash who takes it from Abu Hazim, from Abu Huraira. And although I go into uh, the other riwayat as well, but because a lot of them centrally are based on Al-A'mash, uh, I, I show the criticism to do with Al-A'mash, Suleiman Al-A'mash. Now, 
our friend here, brother, you know, brother, this one, please, please, this one, you know, brother. <laughs> I think the brother is from Bahrain, you know, the brother. <laughs> and I believe that he's, uh, he's not allowed to do the preaching in Bahrain, you know, this one. So now, oh, he's not allowed to do it because this, because all he does is just bash his Shia. And obviously, <laughs> I think he's a bit scared, you know, in Bahrain because the Shia, you know, they will then arrest him and then bash him back. You know, this one not nice, you know. <laughs> so he's not allowed to <laughs> preach in, in Bahrain. But anyway, he's managed to find time to dedicate it to me. Shukran, shukran, jasreelan, ya akhi, ya akhi. Shukran, wallahi, wallahi. <laughs> right, so Fariduddin. Uh, uh, <laughs> what he's done is he said how dare Abu Layth just because this hadith doesn't sit well with him and it's because he feels this inequality first of all is nothing to do with inequality this is to do with rape okay so let's get the thing clear Right, it's nothing to do, we're not just talking about, and inequality would be a problem anyway, but this is much greater than that. So, he says, how dare he criticize Al-A'mash, this is such a reliable narrator, this narrator, he has over 500 hadith, you know, 500 hadith in the Sahihain, in the Muslim and the Bukhari, you know, brother, so in the Muslim and the Bukhari. <laughs> Oh well, well, my friend, let me tell you this one. You know, we go to the, we go to the kalam, we go to the kalam. <laughs> this, this way. <laughs> porati, mi amigo, porati. Right. So we've got here al Amish. What had people said about al Amish? Abdullah ibn Mubarak had said about him that innama afsada ahl al innama afsada hadith. The Ahlul Kufa, the people who destroyed the Hadith of Ahlul Kufa, was Abu Ishaq and and who who Qon Kian Man <laughs> Al A'mash A'mash destroyed the Hadith of Ahlul Kufa, huh? Okay, but let's go on. A'mash, my dear friends was a great mudallis. What does mudallis mean? A mudallis is somebody who would omit names in the chain. So if I'm narrating, let's say I'm narrating something from, let's say from Umar, from Abdullah. Now, I realize that Umar, people, may be a, there may be a problem with him. Or some people may not like him. So there's different types of tadlis. But the one I want to get to that Al-A'mash used to do. Is he would drop this name altogether. This name of Umar that may be problematic. Let's say as an example. That people may say. Oh. Uh, and they may go straight to Abdullah. And this could be any person. I'm just using a random name. Now. Because he assumes that people know. I also took from Abdullah. So people will assume that this is a connected chain. But I've dropped a person in the middle. Now, what do people say about Tadlis? Now, Tadlis is of different categories. You've got, they usually branch it into three categories. The third category being the worst of its kind. And that is where the person you drop and omit is actually a weak narrator. So you've actually done this with malicious intent because, you see, if you did it benevolently, like let's say I just dropped a name just because oh, I just said it like I wasn't fussed. But even if I mention the name, he's a sound narrator, so you've got no problem with him. That's of a lesser category because really I should be transparent and disclose everything. But where I drop the name and he's weak, there that's massively problematic because I'm misleading you. Okay, now in Tahdib al Kamal, it's mentioned that Al A'mash did Tadlis on more than 20 of his teachers. He did Tadlis. Tadlis an Akthar min Aisharina Shaykhan. Wa an Ahadihim, and from one of them, one of these particular 20, he did more than a hundred riwayat, a hundred narrations he did Tadlis. 
A hundred. So it's not, Tadlis is not just omitting somebody, dropping them from the name. But in this case, it's dropping problematic people. And then connecting with another person, his sheikh, who I'm also connected with. So people assume I took it directly from him. So if you, if you see where I'm coming from. Right now, what does a dhahabi say? A dhahabi. A dhahabi says, Rubbama dallasa an da'if. That mm, and at times he did tadlis from weak people. From da'if. What does Al-Ala'i say in Jami'u Tahseel? And what does Ibn Abd al-Bar say in the Tamheed? They say, Yudallisu anil du'afa. He would do tadlis from weak narrators. He would hide them and complete the chain. Tadlis from weak narrators. This is why Shu'bah, who was called Amirul Mu'minina fil Hadith, said, Tadlis is haram! Haram! <laughs> wait, there, I gotta do this the pro proper, you know, the Pakistani Munazra style. Wait, there, the, wait there. <laughs> Not just Yudallis Wanid Du'afa. Yudallis Wanid Du'afa! <laughs> you dallisu ani du'afa. He would do tadlis. So, ya ayu al mudallisun. So, Farid al mudallis. So, Sunni defense should be actually called tadlis defense. Right? So, trying to defend. So, they're so offended. How have I said that there's problems with al Amash? Look at this, the Ilal of Tirmidhi commentaries on this. Right. They mention Ali ibn al-Madini mentions that he has idhirab in some of his narrations. Uh, and they mention Laysa bidak. Al-A'mash yadharib. Al-A'mash, check this out. Haka ibn al-Bara fi kitab al-Ilal. في كتاب العلل عن علي بن المديني قال الأعمش كثير الوهم كثير الوهم ها قليل الوهم is he وهم is like where you, you, you make mistakes and uh, but not just mistakes like uh, blunders it's like blunders like that is it قليل الوهم is he you know he would have some kind of is it قليل الوهم لا لا كثير الوهم he would make mistakes in these kind of, he would miss, kind of like misrepresent them. In fi ahadithi ha and then he gives examples of who. Okay, so kathirul waham, yudallisu al dhafa. So uh, Sunni defense, <laughs> my brother. This one big problem, you know. This one big problem. <laughs> So Sunni defense was to say, oh, is Abu Layth then? Yeah, you could say have illusions, but as in to make mistakes is the main thing, what they're trying to get at. Now, Sunni defense is saying that there's over 500 narrations in Sahihain of al -Amash. Does that mean every single one of them is weak? I never said every single one of them has to be weak. Why? Because hadith, what is the whole purpose of chain criticism? Something people constantly forget is chain criticism was really only invented so we could know whether the mutton, the actual content of the hadith was sound. Chain criticism was not a goal in itself. Chain criticism was only there so we know the teaching of the prophet was correct. So let's... First of all, we look at the chain, fine. Then we look at, all oh, right, ah, look at that, gym in the morning, huh? <laughs> Cramping up now. So, right now, the now we look at the content, the hadith content. Does it go against re the three principles? Does it go against reason? Does it go against the established sources like the Quran and 
and the corroborated and the taught authentic sunnah, the authentic sunnah, does it go against the principles of Islam? Maybe it complements them perfectly. Then we've got no problem with that hadith because it just complements teachings which are already there. No hay problemas, mi amigo. But if the teaching is telling you, oh, you can blackmail somebody into having sex with them, this is one big problem, my friend. But then seriously, what do we expect from these people? These are the same people who in their last refutation against me, and I played the recording, if you watch my clip, and I believe it was him as well, this exact same person, saying that, so what if the Prophet was sexually impotent? These were their words. I said, so what? It's in Bukhari, so what? You see, this is the kind of respect these people have to our deen, to Allah and His Messenger. What do we expect from these kind of people? They will do anything to salvage Bukhari. Now, I've got nothing against Bukhari per se. You see, Imam Bukhari may have been a great person. His book was his private project. But what these people have turned Bukhari into is, is unacceptable. They've given it infallible status. They've said that every hadith, the hadith in Sahihain, they've said Yufidul Qata, which means are certain, certain. And that is utter nonsense. 